Hello and welcome to Azariah's studio. My name is Sarah. I am the artist and designer behind Azariah's studio. This piece is a little bit different. I'm not going to be physically showing any stitches this time. I'm going to be explaining some stuff. I have pinned it out in hopes that you can see things because, you know, I don't have that many hands. I'm going to put one more pin in here. If you want to make this swatch for yourself to have more understanding of what we're about to talk about, there is a link in the description to the swatch directions. You will need two different colors of yarn to get the full understanding of what we're doing here. So what I'm gonna talk about is how to count rows. I had somebody ask me recently, how do I count my garter stitch rows? And I know for a lot of people, I, and myself included, I often wonder, well, is this eight or is it seven? And part of that is going to be where your tail is. And we'll get to that in a minute. And then I was started working different swatches and things like that. Um, and I'm like, well, wait a minute. Is this my cast on stitches? This, this loop I'm counting as row one or is it actual row one? I'm like, okay, we're adding that too. So I did the cast on in green. It's my normal backwards loop cast on. And then I immediately changed to the gray and I worked four rows in the gray, and you can see that very clearly. Then I worked four rows in green, changed back to the gray, and I worked four rows in garter stitch. So four rows plain knit here, in garter stitch, in the gray. So here's one ridge, and here's two ridges. Here's one row, if you dig in here, here's row two, here's row three, here's row four. So if you pull those garter ridges apart far enough, you can count the individual rows. Then I did, then I changed from garter stitch to stock and knit, like when we would knit a normal swatch, like this guy here. If you're just trying to figure out your gauge swatch, well. Where do I start counting? Do I start counting with this one here? Or is this one actually number one? And what do I end with? Is this one the end or is this one the end? Working this swatch in different colors was very helpful to see that. What, the, what, what we thought is number one over here, it, it is not. Because you can see that first loop there, that's gray. So I know that's row four of these four garter stitch rows. So therefore, this one here would be row one. That's obvious because it's in different colors. I need to take what I learned from this swatch and carry it over and translate it to my other swatches moving forward. And what we thought might be the end here, this guy, is the first loop is a loop in row one of that next garter stitch section. So stock and knit after the cast on, changing to garter, change back to stock and knit and then to garter again and you can clearly see which ones to count and which ones not to count. I would suggest <clears throat> making your sides better than I did mine. See the video about how to carry your yarn and weave in your ends and make this swatch something that you have with you, at least for this swatching part, for your, your gauge swatch. If changing from garter to stock and knit in a project often, then maybe keep the swatch in that project. Now back to talking about your end. I know that if I cast, if I do my backwards loop cast on, I know the, where my end is gonna be located if I cast on this with and knit with the same color. Make a note of that. 
it's going to be different if you're a left-handed knitter versus a right-handed knitter and which hand you use to cast on. And you can do that with any cast on. If you will just make a note of, okay, on the right, on the right side of my work, when I hold up my needle, my tail is hanging from the bottom right corner. Just write that in your notes. If you use uh, the Knit Companion, if you still print out papers like I do, get a sticky and put it on there. Or if you're scared to lose the sticky, just write it right on there. I used this cast on, and because of that, when I'm looking at the right side, my tail is going to be hanging from this corner or this corner, either the right corner or the left corner. That will help you if you lose track of what row you were on and you have a mixed pattern situation going on. I'm doing something right now. It only has one purl row in it out of the four row repeat, but because of the nature of uh, garter stitch and throwing that one row of pearls in there, it messes all kinds of things up. It's like having three rows of stock and knit and one row of garter. And there's a lot of the time, I can't tell the front from the back. They look very, very similar. And unfortunately, I don't have a corner because it's a bias piece. And if you end up in a situation like that, then put a marker, a lightweight marker through don't put it through one leg of one stitch because that's going to really be difficult on that stitch. And I don't even do a whole stitch. Well, not exactly. I take the left leg of one stitch and the right leg of the stitch next to it. And I put them together. And put my marker in there. And then right on the pattern, marker is on right side of work. And make sure it's a big enough one that it's not going to shift to the back. So that is how to count your rows in stock and knit and in garter right after your cast on with this particular cast on. Other cast ons might vary. Backwards loop I use 95% of the time. As I do different cast ons um, and I make videos of them, I will let you know how to count the rows after them. Um, happy counting. Thank you for watching. Happy making.